Thank you for your patience. Our fourth and really another fantastic paper, um, Abdel Nasser Kaadian, Kaadian, uh, MD and PhD, former professor at University of Aleppo, Aleppo, Syri Syria, which we've been hearing a lot about, and now international visiting professor at Weber University, Weber State University, Ogden, Utah really a critical paper, Education During Conflicts, Syrian Conflict as an Example. Actually, it's my pleasure to be here with you. I would like firstly to thank the organizer of this very important conference, for giving me the opportunity to be here. So, as you can see that I am from Syria. My name is Abdul Nasser Kadan. So, I am an orthopedic surgeon. I used to work for the last 35 years as orthopedic surgeon in Syria, and I was a professor at Aleppo University. I left the country because of the war. I spent four, the first four years in Aleppo University when the war began, and then I felt it was dangerous to stay there. I lost some of my colleagues who are doctors. They died, either by the hand of the governmental troops or the hand of the opposition troops. So, such as about half of the faculties of the University of Aleppo, they left the country, I left. I have a pleasure to be here in the state and to work as international visiting professor at Weber State University in Utah State. So as you can see that my presentation is related to the education actually. I wonder if I can be here maybe. Yes. Can I be here because more close to the screen? So you know that the education is very important for everyone. And it is estimated by UNESCO just maybe two or three years ago, it is estimated that about 57 million children, they are out of the school, about third of them uh, because of the conflict worldwide. Now Syria is the same issue. We have, it is estimated now just two years ago by UNESCO that 4.3 million children and youth out of the school. And this number, you can imagine that Syrian people, the population of Syria before the war, it was 22 million. So when we say 22 million, when we say that about 4.3, it is very big number. Nowadays, this number is more big because it belonged to two years ago. And this is Syria map. You know, this is the, you know that from north it is Turkey, east Iraq, south Jordan and Israel with Palestine and the west Lebanon and Mediterranean Sea. And you know that is still when I left my country four years ago, the situation, it was extremely dangerous. Nowadays, unlike from the media, what you listen to the media, the situation is still very bad there, and you can see that only the Syrian government actually control about 70% of the area of Syria, while the other part of Syria is still ruled by some of the uh, different groups of the opposition. And as I told you, the situation is, we will see now, it's still dangerous there, and you can see that here, it is estimated that more than this is maybe belong to two years ago. We'll see now if the, the number is more big than this. Than this, It is estimated that more than five million people, they left the country from, again, 22 million people before the war. And the majority of them actually located in Turkey. Now in Turkey, about three million and a half. We'll see that. And then we have in Lebanon, 
in Jordan and in different other countries. And the most important thing that we can say that this is the number, the real number of the people, 6.6 .6 people, they left the country displaced in, inside the country. Nowadays, about, as I told you, six to seven million, they left the country. It means they are still about 15 million. Half of them, they displayed in other relatively more safe places in Syria. And as you can see here, for example, Lebanon, 1.5, Jordan, 1.3, and Turkey, about 3.5. All of them, they left the country in addition to about 1 million in Europe, mostly in German nowadays. And you can see here, this is the problem now. It's estimated that around 77,000 refugees, they came back to Syria in this year, while we can see more in this year, the same year, 2.9 million people were newly displaced inside the country because the conflict sometimes different from one part to other part. So nowadays, in addition to that, we can find that many people, they returned, but in last year itself, it's about 3 million people, they displaced their houses to another more, relatively more safe in the country. And this is just to have a look about America, how much the people in America, totally it is estimated that 18,000 people, they left their country, now they are living in America in different, mainly in uh, California actually. And this is the problem now. Before the conflict, it is estimated that 97% of the children uh, uh, belong to the uh, primary school, they are inside the school, while only 3% out of s the school. Regarding university education, it is estimated that 67% of the people inside universities, these numbers are before the war. And since the beginning of the conflict of Syria, actually, as I told you, about more than half of the people were displaced. And this is very important to know that, again, this is the, uh, maybe two years ago, it's belonged to 2015, and you can see that very important that people or the students between five, b between five to 17 years old, 30, uh, 63% actually inside Syria without education. You can imagine. While the number is less the people who are outside of the Syria, like in Jordan and Lebanon, this is because the help of NGOs. NGOs used to help extremely to help the students, but you can see that only 48% out of education. While the people between 18 to 24, you can see that 72% of the people inside Syria, inside without education, and then we can say that the people outside Syria, 83%, because you know that university education needs more money and they have no such money and there is no help by NGOs to help those people. So we can find it is 83% of the people who left the country outside universities. So this is represent a very huge problem. Again, if you remember that, uh, it's the people of Syria, it's 22 million. This number represents very important percentage of the people outside of the schools or university. You know that it is estimated that 40% of school destroyed actually, or damaged under the attack, and, and sometimes it used as a temporary shuttles for the people who left their country to other most, more, more relatively safe areas and no schools are no longer a safe place for children and to, uh, to hope and dream, leaving an estimated 2.8, 2 2.08 million children, youth in Syria. This is, we are talking about now inside Syria. They left their school or the university. This is just an example to how much extent schools were bombed or were injured. This is another one, you can see that. It's the problem, and this is another schools, and it is estimated that, as I mentioned, be previously mentioned, that 40% of the schools were injured or destroyed partially 
or totally. This is explosion at Aleppo University. I was still there when a rocket targeted the university, a flight rocket targeted the university, and so many students from engineering college, they died. It is estimated 100 students were died. And this made and forced many faculties of the university to leave the country because it was very dangerous. Not only the faculty, many students actually, they left the country because it was extremely dangerous. This was after two years from the beginning of the war. It belonged to Aleppo University. I was still remember very in more details about everything happened in, the, in this explosion. And you can see that the problem of education, you know that. When we have to cut violence, we have to cut a kind of conflict, education is the best way. But where is no education, we have the opportunity more to, make, to have more conflict, to have more violence, and so on. The problem now. No education, it means more violence, it means more conflict, and this more conflict and this more violence will make low education. And unless we have initiative to actually recorrect the situation of education in Syria or any other place where it is a conflict, I think we, the conflict will be more and more, the violence will be more and more. And actually, for example, if we take an example in Lebanon, as I mentioned, it is estimated that one million and a half of the Syrian people now, they are living in Lebanon. And you know that the people of Lebanon is only 4.5. You can imagine this means that more than a quarter of the people of Lebanon are Syrian nowadays. And you know that the problem in Lebanon, it is Lebanon is not a rich country. It is a poor country. So from this, you can imagine that to how much extent those people, they are suffering more and more from poverty. And this kind of poverty will make more and more uneducated, mainly uneducated children. So the situation... Uh, in Syria and in Jordan nowadays is not, le not, uh, not less than that of, not more than of the, the, the problem in Lebanon. Uh, you know that the Jordan is about five or six million people originally, or uh, the people of Jordan, and nowadays Syrian people, they represent about the fifth of the people of Jordan, and you know that Jordan also is a poor country, and they suffer more and more from less education. And actually, uh, we have many of challenges of those people, of children to be involved in education. The most important then, the most important thing that it is for all the people who immigrated outside, they are poor people. They cannot meet the expenses of education. And we have diminished help from NGOs. And we are actually all Syrian people or all the people in the region, they are surprised about that because it's according to UNESCO, it is not too much uh, expensive to help those people. It's less than the price of one flight, which is all the big powers who supported the people who fight each other. We have, without such supporting by big powers countries, to those people to give them weapons I think only one flight, the price of one flight, it's enough to educate, to educate all of those children. We are surprised. The problem is our colleague from UN is not here to ask him this question. Nowadays, all international community is completely paralyzed to have a solution for the Syrian problem. Especially that it's involved, big powers is involved there. And you know that it's no more we say it is Syrian war. Actually, it is a proxy war. It's big powers, they actually fight each other on Syrian land, but who pay the price? Children of Syria, actually. The Syrian children, they actually pay the price of this war. And for example, as a refugee, I cannot study because of my financial issues. I have to work instead of studying. This is normal statement, we can hear it from many people actually in Syria. Mohammed, Mohammed is 17 years old and here we can, for example, just to have a look to this YouTube, which is about maybe only three minutes, just to have an idea what is going on mainly among refugees outside in the neighboring countries in, uh, around Syria. I am actually so sorry 
because there is technical problem, so I cannot, uh, you cannot see it, but it, is, it was very important just to have an idea about the issue that most of those children outside of education because of financial problem. And, and I, as mentioned, it is estimated by UNESCO that only 60 million is enough to support those people. It's extremely less than the price of one military flight. And this is a problem. This is a problem. We are living at this time and we cannot find a solution for four million children, Syrian children, either inside Syria or outside Syria, and it cost, according to UNESCO, such as of 60 million US dollars. But this is the problem, actually, we face, and that's all. I think thank you for your listening. <laughs>